<clears throat> the Glass Mountain. Once upon a time, there was a glass mountain at the top of which stood a castle made of pure gold. And in front of the castle, there grew an apple tree on which there were golden apples. Anyone who picked an apple gained admittance into the golden castle, and there in a silver room sat an enchanted princess of surpassing fairness and beauty. She was rich, too, as she was beautiful, for the cellars of the castle were full of precious stones, and great chests of the finest gold stood round the walls of all the rooms. Many knights had come from afar to try their luck, but it was in vain that they attempted to climb the mountain. In spite of having their horses shod with sharp nails, no one managed to get more than halfway up, and then they all fell right back down to the bottom of the steep, slippery hill. Sometimes a broken arm, sometimes a leg, and many a brave man had even broken his neck. The beautiful princess sat in a window and watched all the bold knights trying to reach her on their splendid horses. The sight of her always gave men fresh courage and they flocked from four quarters of the globe to attempt the work of rescuing her. But all in vain. And for seven years the princess had sat now and waited for someone to scale the glass mountain. Heaps of corpses, both of riders and horses, lay around the mountain. And many dying men lay groaning there, unable to go any further with their wounded limbs. And this is a children's story, supposedly. The whole neighborhood had the appearance of a vast churchyard, graveyard. In three more days, the seven years would be at an end, when a knight in golden armor and mounted on a spirited seed was seen making his way towards this fatal hill. Sticking his spurs into his horse, he made a rush at the mountain and got up halfway. And then he calmly turned his horse's head and came down again without a slip or a stumble. The following day he started in the same way. His horse trod on the glass as if it had been level earth, and sparks of fire flew from its hooves. All the other knights gazed in astonishment, for he had almost gained the summit. In another moment he would have reached the apple tree. But all of a sudden, a huge eagle rose up and spread its mighty wings, hitting as it did so the knight's horse in the eye. The beast shied, opened its wide nostrils, and tossed its mane. Then, rearing up high in the sky, its hind feet slipped, and it fell with its rider down the steep mountainside. Nothing was left of either of them except their bones which rattled in the battered golden armor like dry peas in a pod. Wow. <laughs> and now there was only one more day before the close of the seven years. Then there arrived on the scene a mere schoolboy, a merry, happy-hearted youth, at the same time strong and well-grown. He saw how many knights had broken their necks in vain, and, undaunted, he approached the steep mountain on foot and began to ascend. For a long time, he had heard his parents speak of the beautiful princess who sat in the golden castle at the top of the glass mountain. He listened to all he heard and determined that he too would try his luck. But he first went to the forest, and he caught a lynx. And, cutting off the creature's sharp claws, he fastened them on his own hands and feet. Armed with these weapons, he boldly started up the glass mountain. 
The sun was nearly going down, and the youth had got to no more than halfway up. He could hardly draw breath, he was so worn out, and his mouth was parched by thirst. A huge cloud passed over his head, but in vain did he beg and beseech her to let drop of water fall on him. He opened his mouth, and the black cloud sailed past, and not as much of a drop of dew moistened his dry lips. His feet were torn and bleeding, and he could only hold on now with his hands. Evening closed in, and he strained his eyes to see if he could behold the top of the mountain. Then he gazed beneath him, and what a sight met his eyes. A yawning abyss a certain and terrible death at the bottom, reeking with half-decayed bodies of horses and their riders. And this had been the end of all the other brave men like himself who had attempted the ascent. It was almost pitch dark now, and only the stars lit up the glass mountain. The poor boy clung on as if glued to the glass by his blood-stained hands. He made no struggle to get higher, for all his strength had left him, and seeing no hope, he calmly awaited death. Then all of a sudden he fell into a deep sleep, and forgetful of his dangerous position, he slumbered sweetly, but all the same, Although he slept, he had stuck his sharp claws so firmly in the glass that he was quite safe not to fall. Now the golden apple tree was guarded by the eagle which had overthrown the golden knight and his horse. Every night he flew around the glass mountain, keeping a careful lookout, and no sooner had the moon emerged from the clouds than the bird rose up from the apple tree, and circling around the air, caught sight of the sleeping youth. <laughs> Greedy for carrion and sure that this must be a fresh corpse. The bird swooped down upon the boy, but he was awake now and perceiving the eagle, he determined by its help to save himself. The eagle dug its sharp claws into the tender flesh of the youth. But he bore the pain without a sound, and seized the bird's two feet with his hands. The creature in terror lifted him high up into the air and began to circle around the tower of the castle. The youth held on bravely. He saw the glimmering palace, by which the pale rays of the moon looked like a dim lamp, and he saw the high windows, and around one of them a balcony in which the beautiful princess sat lost in sad thoughts. Then the boy saw that he was close to the apple tree, and drawing a small knife from his belt, he cut off both the eagle's feet. The bird rose up in the air in its agony and vanished into the clouds, and the youth fell on the broad branches of the apple tree. Then he drew out the claws of the eagle's feet that had remained in his flesh put the peel of one of the golden apples on his wound, and in one moment it was healed and well again. He pulled several of the beautiful apples and put them in his pockets, and then he entered the castle. The door was guarded by a great dragon, but as soon as he threw an apple at it, the beast vanished. At the same moment, a gate opened, and the youth perceived a courtyard full of flowers and beautiful trees, and on a balcony sat the lovely, enchanted princess with Ratun. As soon as she saw the youth, she ran towards him and greeted him as her husband and master. She gave him all her treasures, and the youth became as rich and a mighty ruler. But... He never returned to the earth, for only the mighty eagle, who had been the guardian of the princess in the castle, could have carried on his wings the enormous treasure down to the world. But as the eagle had lost his feet, it died, 
and its body was found in a wood on the glass mountain. One day, when the youth was strolling about the palace garden with the princess, now his wife, he looked down over the edge of the glass mountain and saw, to his astonishment, a great number of people gathered there. He blew his silver whistle, and the swallow who acted as a messenger to the golden castle flew past. Fly down and ask what the matter is, he said to the little bird, who sped off like lightning, and soon returned, saying, The bread of the eagle has restored all the people below to life. All those who have perished on the mountain are awakening up to day, as if they were from a sleep. They're mounting the horses, and the whole population are gazing on this unheard of wonder with joy and amazement. 